Hi, I'm Josh Fielstra, Product Specialist with Native Instruments. Uh, and I'm here showing off some of the new products, uh, some of the five new products that we announced on October 13th. Um, we announced four instruments, uh, new instruments, and uh, also one piece of hardware. And I'm going to talk about the hardware uh, right now. Uh, basically, what we have here is Audio Control 1, uh, which is a very, very compact uh, professional audio interface. Um, I've got it here and you can see a lot of uh, the sort of knobs and buttons and all kinds of things that are on it. I'll talk about those in just a moment, but the basic summary is that this is a very compact form factor uh, that is capable of going up to uh, 192 kilohertz. If you want to run this at 192 kilohertz, uh, 24 bits, you can totally do that. And everywhere in between from 44.1 uh, all the way on up. Um, all of the inputs themselves are balanced. I actually have a dual uh, Nutric uh, quarter inch slash XLR input, uh, as well as a standard uh, TRS uh, balanced input. Uh, and both of these inputs have their own gain staging, uh, their own preamp, uh, and their own impedance switch. I can actually switch between uh, line and mic level. Uh, they each have separate controls. And the XLR side is actually phantom powered as well, if you want that. So there's actually a lot going on uh, just with those two little, in those two little inputs. Um, I actually have two output buses. Uh, on the back side of the interface, I have a total of four discrete outputs. Uh, that is two stereo pairs, which are also balanced, um, as well as individual output controls uh, for each of those buses uh, for outputs one and two and output three and four. And I can direct monitor uh, any of those outputs as well. Um, I've got some direct monitoring functionality here where I can turn it on and off, um, switch it to mono, as well as, once again, another uh, gain stage here that I can control the direct monitoring output. And of course, a headphone jack, uh, which via this switch right here, I can actually pick off either bus one and two or three and four. So I, DJs will really dig this because you can actually uh, run outputs one and two to the house and uh, pick up outputs three and four as like a queuing bus and that has its own uh, separate headphone control. Uh, on the back side you can see here that it's actually bus powered via USB 2.0 um, and it's also a MIDI interface uh, on top of that. So lots and lots of connectors uh, in this deceptively small little interface um, and here's the 48 uh, uh, volt uh, phantom power I was mentioning earlier. On the top of this interface, um, I actually have uh, a large knob and three individual buttons. Uh, here's the thing with, with the controls on top of this thing. Uh, these can send pretty much anything. Uh, I can send MIDI uh, off of these buttons, freely configurable, um, or I can send things like operating system key commands. Uh, you know, I could send the letter K if I wanted to. Um, and I can also program it such that when I turn the button to the left, it does one thing. When I turn it to the right, it does another thing. If I turn it left, maybe it's sending MIDI uh, program change. Uh, if I turn it to the right, uh, maybe it's sending control X or something like that. Plus, uh, the buttons have the same functionality and I can also set up combinations as well. So I might, if I hold this button down and turn the knob, it might do one thing. Hold this button down, turn the knob, it might be do, do something completely different. Um, what a lot of people are using this for is using the button, say, for master gain on like a DJ program like Tractor. And then if I hold the left button down, that controls the left X volume. Hold the right button down, turn the knob, controls the right deck. So you can do all kinds of different things. And I actually have the software editor uh, loaded up here on my machine so you can take a look at that, what that looks like. Here's how I can make all of these assignments for the knob, uh, the left button, middle button, and then combinations of those buttons. Uh, if I want the left button to be a modifier, I hit modifier and now while I hold the left button down, I can select a completely new set of functionality for the other buttons. When, just when I'm holding the left button down, they can do something different. Um, here's the window actually for the knob. You can see the big, all the different choices I have here uh, between MIDI or sending an operating system key. Here's a little bit what I was talking about earlier. Uh, there on the MIDI side, you can actually send uh, MIDI notes, after touched, all kinds of different uh, controller type messages. Um, and here's my note pitch, the individual velocity. And that's just when I turn the knob left. I've got a completely different set of things I can do when I turn it right. So 
extremely assignable. This is good for programs that actually might not allow you to automate uh, a particular parameter, like say the transport control. Sometimes you can't control that via a MIDI note uh, or a MIDI controller. You can get around that here by sending a key command. I might be able to hit the enter key when I press the left button. So lots of cool stuff going on here. Uh, the drivers are very tight. You can go down to single digit latency. Um, and that's kind of uh, audio control in a nutshell. Um, it actually ships in addition to the controller itself. It also comes with Express Keyboards, uh, which is a slimmed down version of our FM7 plugin, our B4 plugin, um, and um, Pro 53, uh, as well as Tractor LE, which is a light version of our Tractor DJ software, and Guitar Combos, uh, a light version of Guitar Rig. So, comes with a lot of software on top of that.